Hello everyone, how are y'all doing? I hope that you're doing well and taking care of yourself. Welcome back to another episode. <sighs> All right, so let me let me let me start off by saying that I am still reeling from the last episode. If you did not watch or listen to put it on the floor, I highly recommend that you listen to it. Normally I talk about topics and I try to keep them very vague. I try to generalize it and and make it about the collective, even though I'm talking from a place of my own personal experience, but I try to kind of share from that experience what maybe all of us could be going through at the same time. The last episode, I was much more personal. I was more direct in what I am experiencing, what I am going through, how I'm navigating that, how I'm dealing with all of that. And when I finished recording, I was just like buzzing. And that lets me know, cause that happens quite a bit where I'm just in such a good space. Like I'm in this really nice vortex of, Ooh, this feels really good. And so I was kind of riding that high for a couple of days. And then I shared the episode with some people that I trust their, their, their opinion and their ideas and just wanted to know like what they thought about it before it went up live. And they're like, this is, wow, you, I mean, this is great. So I encourage you to watch that, listen to it. Um, I really, truly want to be more vulnerable, more open on this space, on all these platforms. Um, I just recorded something actually for the Patreon that was a little more in-depth, a little more personal. So there's other platforms too where I'll be sharing a lot more. Um, But yeah, like please check it out, listen to it, share it, let me know what you think about it. For this episode, I'm gonna kind of piggyback off of put it on the floor in a, a little bit, um, and I'm going to keep it personal. So I'm not going to generalize and kind of make it a topic for the collective. I'm still centralizing, cent- I'm still putting myself in the midst of this. And then we'll talk about topics and, and general generalizations from there. Can I speak English? Can I do that? Okay. So in order for me to really get into this topic, I need to, um, I need to have y'all go on a journey with me. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to be Sophia from Golden Girls. Picture it. It's like 2018, 2019. I'm in the Bay as in Oakland, California. Okay. I am hiking. I am uh, spending time by the ocean. I'm, I'm with the trees. I'm just, I'm in nature. I'm in nature. Okay. I'm doing the things. I'm having a moment. And I, say to myself, you know what? Life is good. Like life is good. Something is kind of missing. I don't know what that something is. And I had started inner power some years before, maybe like three years before that. And it wasn't really doing a whole lot. I was putting in some work. I was creating content. I was all over the place with it and didn't really feel rooted and grounded in it. And every time I would try to do something, I just felt stifled or stuck. And so I'm like, okay, and like, I want to do something with my life. I want to do something that is, is in alignment with who I am. Like I want to live out my purpose. I, I want to know more about me and who I am. Like what, like, what do I do? How do I, how do I do this? So I'm having this internal conversation as I'm hiking. And then I just say out loud, I said, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. I am ready to be the person that you have created and designed me to be. I'm no longer going to try to take control and do what I think is best and pick a, a, an avenue or, or make a decision that I think is best for me, you know, you know what's best for me. And so that means that I have to relinquish the control. I have to let you take the wheel. I will take your lead. Whatever risks I need to take, whatever sacrifices I need to make, I will do those things because I am ready to step into 
the phase of my life that will have me being the fullness of me. I'm ready to live out my purpose. I'm ready to be like the full expression of myself and who I am and who I know to be or who I believe myself to be, but I know you know who I am. I'm ready. I'm done with the bullshit. I'm ready. Let's do this. Let me tell you something. Okay. I'm getting close to the mic, so I'm not going to shout. I want to say something very clearly. Okay. If you are not ready to manifest, if you are not ready to step into the fullness of who you are and your purpose, don't say that to God. What I just said, don't say that. Because what will happen is God will restructure your life to where you have done so much changing. And if you are not ready, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You, you want to be able to change. But if you are not ready, it's going to be hell. It's going to be hell. So let me expand on this. Not too long after I made that statement, okay, I'm ready. This is what I want to. I want to do. I'm. I'm, We we doing it. My life started to change, and this is what I want to say. And this is like the topic I think that we're going to dive into is essentially what people don't talk about when they're talking about how to manifest things that you want. There's a lot of people that are talking about manifestation and, and what they want to bring into their life. And they want to be more abundant. They want to be more successful. They want to have a great relationship. They want to have a certain career. They want to have kids, all these things. And that is great. And you may have set up foundations in your life that will support you for the things that you're trying to go after. You may have been doing that, or you may have not been. (laughs) Okay. So you may just have been living life but not realizing like, okay, I'm saying this and I'm like, oh wait, okay, we're going to do this. Not really understanding that it's going to require some deep seated change because if your life was the picture of what it is that you wanted, then you could keep doing the same thing, right? Think about that. If you want to get to another plateau, that means that you have to stop doing the same patterns that you're doing right now because you have to shift into something different. You So you have to do something different to get a different outcome, right? It's just science, <laughs> this is energy, it's law of the universe. So when I said that, I did not understand what was going to then happen after that, the, 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 the events that would be following that statement or that declaration that I made. And let me also be very clear. I had no idea what I wanted to do. At that moment, I was not very clear. Like I said, I was working on inner power. I was building the business. I was kind of all over the place with it. Not really sure, like just trying to figure out what I want to do with it. Like what is the, the, the purpose? What's the core of it? Um, but was this going to be my career? I don't know. At the time I was like, okay, it could be a side hustle. It could be a career. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So I wasn't really sure. So I'm making this statement to God saying, I'm ready. Like, let's do it. I'm ready to be what you have created me to be, what you have put me on this earth to do. I'm ready to do it. I had no clue y'all. I had no clue what that was. I had no clue what I wanted to do at what this was pre 2020. So I'm like in my late thirties. Okay. I'm in my late thirties and I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I really, I don't know. I've done all these other things that have led up to, to this moment. Some things were like the checklist of things that you should do. Boom, boom, boom. 
Some things were not in the checklist of, of what society deems of what you should do, but things that I kind of followed. And I was like, maybe this feels right to me. I'll go in this direction. I'll do this. I'll try that. Eh, it didn't work. Okay. So try something else. All right. So I had gotten to my late thirties and I was just like, okay, here I am. And I just, I'm still kind of perplexed. I'm still kind of perplexed. Now, as a child, I was thinking to myself, like, 30s is old age, 40s is old age, you're old, it's done, it's a wrap, your life is over. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't change from that point on. If you didn't figure it out before then, then that's it, it's a wrap. That's what I used to think, right, as a child, as a teenager. Oh, mm, youth. Now, at a, at a full, at a full 43, soon to be 44, I'm realizing like, this is actually a really good time for me to transition. Or, or I was thinking about that right around the time I hit 40. I was like, this is actually a good time for me to transition and to change and to morph and to really kind of be more of myself because I've had all these experiences in my early adulthood and my childhood that have definitely shaped me that I'm trying to like unlearn and unpack some things and also kind of heighten some things. So there's a certain knowingness, there's a certain wisdom that I have now that I didn't have in my twenties, certainly didn't have in my twenties. I'm still trying to figure shit out in my twenties, right? So I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. So now that I have some, some life, now that I've been on this planet for some time, some decades, kind of, I I got some skin in the game. I'm like, okay, I think that I can now really transition into figuring out what it is that I want to do for myself, who, who it is, who I am, what I'm meant to do. I, I think I, I think I can do that. And I have time. I have plenty of time to do so. So when I said that statement, when I made that declaration, I really was at a, a, a not even a crossroads. I, I was just kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what life holds for me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. So you God know more than anything. I've tried all the things. I've, I've, I've made the decisions. I've, I've taken the wheel and Sometimes it led me down some paths that were really good and were really fun. And sometimes it led me down some paths that I was like, why did I go down here? Why did I make that turn? Why did I do that? Okay. So then I got to this place where I was like, I'm going to fully trust in God. I'm going to fully trust in you and whatever it is that you need me to do, I will do. So for all of you out there, because I know all your all everybody's on the manifestation thing. Everybody on the manifestation tip. We all we all trying to manifest. We all manifesting. I know. I know. I know that's where you're at. I, I know. Trust me. I know. Be prepared to f- start to feel shifts and changes. Now, the shifts and changes are not going to happen in your external world that then affect you internally. No, 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 no. That's not how the manifestation and you moving into your power works. No, what's going to happen is internally, you're like, "Mm, this shit, this shit don't feel right no more. Even though I've been doing this all my life, this, something don't feel right. Yeah, maybe I don't feel comfortable with that. You know what, this person here, I don't know. If, I don't. I don't know if the, the the dynamic is working for me anymore. You know what? This job. Yeah, this job is good, and it's it's all right. It's doing what it needs to do. But uh, I don't know. I think I need to make some changes. There's going to be some shift within you. The minute that you call out to God and you say, "I'm ready," God's like, "Bet." Bet. <laughs> so since we're not playing games, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to now plant the seeds in you. I was simply waiting for you to be ready. I'm going to now plant the seeds of change and transformation within you so that the things that are not meant for you, the things that are not going to get you to where you need to go, you will 
look at them in a way where you're like, uh, okay, maybe I don't, maybe that isn't for me. You do have action. You do have choice. You also have the responsibility to move, to act on the opportunities that God presents to you. That's you. God simply says, here it is. And you can say yes, or you can say no. Either way, it's fine. It's a decision that you make. It's not good. It's not bad. It's what is. So you make these decisions or you you start to feel this change. And God's like, okay, all this stuff that you chose that you wanted, but isn't a part of your path. It's not a part of where I have you going. I'm going to start either making them move out of your life or you're going to see things in a different way. You're going to see the situations. You're going to see the things in a different way so that you have then the decision to make the choice of how you want to move. When I tell you after I made that statement or after I said that declaration, well, first of all, the big shift that happened was, was quarantine COVID hit. And I had some plans. I had things in the works. I had things in the works y'all that were in the time in, in 2020 prepping, planning, just, I'm like, yeah, this is about to be on. It's about to be great. I'm so excited. Boom, boom. COVID happened and shut that shit down. Like, boom. And so I was like, oh, oh, so I guess, I guess I won't be doing that. (laughs) Okay. And I wasn't even flustered about it. I wasn't upset about it. I was like, you know what? Clearly this was not something that I was supposed to do. I mean, not, and I wasn't thinking like, whoa, because I'm not supposed to be doing it. Then the whole world shut down. No. I think that was definitely a collective thing that was going on. There was a collective thing where God was like, reset. There's a lot, there's a lot happening. This is a lot. <laughs> so, um, for me, I took 2020 as a time to be very self-reflective. I was like, all right, well, we're going to be sheltering in place, sheltering in place. Can I speak? We're going to be sheltering in place. And I'm already a homebody. I'm already an introvert. I was very comfortable. I was quite content. There was no problems for me. I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm sheltering in place and I'm being self-reflective and I'm still saying, I'm still saying to God, I'm ready. Like, listen, once we, once we back outside, it's up. It's up once we outside. Tell me what to do, God. Tell me what to do. I will do it. And those churnings started to happen. I'd be in meditation. I'd go for walks. I took the time to say, let me, let me go back to these practices. Let me, let me take some time to kind of, now that I have the time, let me take some time to just run it back and go back to these very basic foundational practices and really use them, not bypass, really use them for what I need them for, which is I'm trying to understand me. And let me tell y'all something. Once I started doing those practices, once I started reconnecting with myself, once I started having like regular, continued, intentional conversations with God, because I have them every day. It's this, you know, it's just a part of my day. But these moments, COVID time was when I said, 2020 was when I said, you know what? I'm going to be intentional about my communication and my communion with spirit source. All that is God. I am going to, for me, I love ritual. I love offerings. I love doing all that. So I started setting up 
rituals and I had my altar that I was tending to. And what I have learned in all of my years of like spiritual work and and being a spiritual practitioner is that there's so many different ways that God can communicate with you. And I have had the the myriad, the, the gamut of ways that there's been communication. But the most, I'll say, effective communication is these like little breadcrumbs. A breadcrumb is when somebody just materializes in your life that you just, you didn't know, but all of a sudden this, this person shows up and you're like, oh, like, okay, interesting, cool. And here you are, you've developed this friendship. And so now you're, you're building with someone and you're like, oh, this is really, really cool. And you don't know why, but there's something there. There's something for that. There's something that you need. And there's something that this person needs in this dynamic. Um, another way spirit, God, source, all that is communicates is, um, or another breadcrumb, I should say, is like, sometimes you'll have just like an idea, like a random thought that just, just plops into your head. And maybe with that random thought, there's an action that needs to be taken. You're not going to really know what the thing is. You're just following the breadcrumbs. If you ever watch the movie, um, Field of Dreams, Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner and he's a farmer and essentially he is building a uh, baseball diamond. But the, the, the clue that he gets is if you build it, he will come. That's all he hears. If you build it, he will come. He don't know what it is and he don't know who he is. All he knows is if I build it, he will come. And so throughout the movie, he just gets these breadcrumbs. He goes on this journey. He meets this person. He meets that person. And suddenly it snowballs and snowballs and snowballs to where like it all makes sense at the end. It, everything that was like some type of adversity, everything that was some type of roadblock, everything that was some type of like trauma, all of these things. I mean, it's a movie. So of course it's going to wrap up in like two hours, but everything coalesces at the end. It's like, oh, that's why you had to build it. Oh, that's why. And and then everything falls into place. But in order for those things to fall into place, he had to be able to follow the breadcrumbs. And you're not going to know what the breadcrumb is for. You're not going to understand why you need to go to Paris. You're not going to understand why you need to change your job. You're not going to understand why you have to cut this person off. You're not going to understand those things. And in fact, you may fight the thing. You'd be like, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And this is something really important to note is that had I not taken the time to really lean into those practices, had I not taken the time to go back to those foundational tools that I could lean on for my spiritual work, for my healing work, had I not done that when my life did a complete 180, I would not I would not have been able to be stable and sane because a lot of things transitioned and changed. A lot of things, I took the active action and said, this, 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 I was presented with something and I said, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to do something different and I'm going to, I'm going to pick this. I normally pick A, but I'm going to pick B. I would be lying if I were to say to you that part of me knew like, oh, in making this decision, I'm moving closer and closer to figuring out who I am. I had no clue. If anything, the decisions that I was making, the choices that I were making were were so drastic that my life was changing in such like drastic ways. So it would have been very easy for me to maintain the same status, the same pattern, the same thing. It would have been extremely easy for me to do that. But at every turn, I was like, um, okay, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a go this way. I'm gonna try this. If you don't have some type of foundation, all this manifestation work that you're doing, all this stuff that you're trying to like bring into your life that you're attracting, if you are not prepared (laughs) 
for when the shifts happen before you even get there, before you even get there. Because it's really the journey. It's the journey of getting to the goal. It's not really the goal. It's not the end. It's not that. It's the experience that happens. And I can say that from my own personal experience, this whole journey has been as difficult as, as it's been, as emotional as it's been, as scary as it's been. It's also been really exciting. <laughs> like it feels so, for me, everything feels so alive. There's so much electricity in the air and I'm just like, yes. But it, it, it took time for me to get there. And I also had to have un shakable, unwavering faith that God has my back, that that declaration that I made in 2018, 2019, that promise is going to be made. And if I look at my life up until this point, I'm still here. Has, has, has God failed me in those situations in, in the past? No, I have failed myself when I didn't listen when I didn't take into account what felt right for me, when I, when I did the thing that I thought was right or like the good girl thing to do or the right thing to do. If I'm trusting that and, I, and, and I'm looking at the track record that God has compared to my tra track record, I'm like, you know, I think, I think you got it. T to be rooted within myself and to be able to say, you know what, I know, if you remember, if you watched or listened to, um, put it on the floor, when I talked about like, there's pe there's some people in my life who are like, what the fuck are you doing? I had to, I have to remain still rooted in, but it's, it's all gonna make sense. <laughs> it's all going to make sense. I know it doesn't make sense to you right now, Quite frankly, it doesn't make sense to me either. I'm not quite understanding all of the bits and pieces, but that's fine because I trust and I have faith that on the other side of this, it's grand. It's grand. That can't, that can't be a low bar. <laughs> it's not a low bar. God has not set me up to be like, meh, you're going to be mid. <laughs> No, God is setting me up to be like, yes, I, I put you here to do great things. You don't know what those great things are. I know what those great things are. And like, let's do it. So let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. I'm sharing all this. I'm saying all this because for, for me, looking at my life, if you had said to me, in 2020, even in 2021, you're going to be doing this, 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 you're going to be here. You're going to be experiencing this. You're going to be with this people, this person, this, I'd be like, what? Excuse me. I don't who that's someone else. You're talking to someone else. This is someone else's life. It's not mine. Do the work, do the work, do the work. You cannot bypass the work to get your manifestation. You cannot bypass the foundational practices, skills, and tools that you need. Because as you level up, you first of all, you don't know what's there. You don't know what's at that level. You've never been at that level before. So you're going to need something that you can hold on to that's going to keep you steady that's going to keep you on that path so that you will keep making the de the, the decisions and choices that are in alignment with your purpose and when you get challenged because you will when those opportunities come that are going to that could possibly thwart you off the plan because they will then you can remain rooted in those practices and those skills and say, okay, as terrifying as this is, as, as scary as this is, as uh, confusing, I, what, what internally feels right, this, this breadcrumb that was presented to me, that was placed in front of me that I'm not quite sure why, 
but I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to keep going down that path. I'm going to keep going down that trail. This work is not easy. Like, I'm just going to be honest and be transparent. This work is not easy. And I don't think it's meant to be easy. I think that part of why it's so difficult is because we have all collectively created a world that is very binding and very limiting to who we are and who we're meant to be. We're supposed to be living our purpose. That's what we're, that's what we're designed to do. Uh, but we have this overlay of these, these systems and structures that say that in order to survive, in order to, to be, we have to kind of follow these rules. So it makes it very difficult and challenging. So understand that if you're listening to this, you're watching this and you're like, that sounds great, but like, I can't do that because I, I, I got this, I got all these responsibilities and things that I need to take care of. So how am I going to be able to like live my purpose if I also have to feed myself and I have to feed other people? I have to have a roof over my head. I get it. I totally understand that. It's part of the reason why I too was very hesitant and and when opportunities or breadcrumbs would show up and it would say, okay, okay. This is the chance for you to go, okay, you said you're ready. And then that fear comes in and says, oh, yeah, I did say I was ready. Um, but am I, 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 I going to have to risk this? And when I tell you like the risks and the sacrifices, <sighs> mm, I was going to say that they're not as scary and as big as I make them out to be. And the reason why I'm hesitant to say that is because there are decisions and choices that I've made that have directly affected people. And I don't want to be dismissive of, of their feelings. I don't want to be dismissive of how my choices have affected them in their life. While for me, I can say, Yes, I'm in a better place and yes, I'm doing the things and yes, I'm moving more in that current of truth for me and and alignment and purpose for me. I understand also that the shakeup for other people was very real. The risks, the sacrifices were very great. And I trusted in the knowing, I, I, I have faith that the things that I have done, the actions, the moves, the decisions, all will not only just make sense. It's like the end, it's like the end of Field of Dreams. It's like, oh, that's why, that's why you did that. Okay, okay. Okay, I I have some understanding now. That's my belief. I'm not even going to say my hope. That's my belief. I, I know without a doubt within my body, within my spirit, that for the people that have been affected in hurtful ways by my decisions and choices, I know that there will be a greater understanding whenever that greater understanding happens for them, but it's not for me to (laughs) monitor that. I'm just acknowledging that and saying that to all of y'all that I'm aware of that. It's not for me to have this moment of like, oh, oh, I get get it. If, If they have that internally, cool. Cool. I'll already know based off of the shift in dynamic and how, how things flow. I already know that we're at that place, but it's not, it's not my responsibility. It's not my job to monitor, to make sure that they're going to get it, that they're going to have the epiphany. I have to keep going. I have to keep going period and point blank. And so I'm going to keep this momentum going. I'm going to keep on this track and we'll see, we'll all get to see this blossoming we'll all get to see this beautiful maturation, this enveloping that 
is not just happening. It's, it's here right now. Because as I'm having these conversations, as I'm doing these podcast episodes, YouTube videos, Patreon, setting up more workshops and doing things on, on the website for inner power, it's already here. And I have more of a clear vision now of what it is that I'm supposed to do. It's not completely clear, but I'm, I, I'm a little bit more aware of some of like the general outlines. And the beautiful thing is because I've had enough practice in the faith that God's got my back, that my ancestors got my back, that spirit has my back, that I have my back, that I have my back, right? Now that I've had enough of, uh, of practice with that, now I can be at a place where I can say, okay, I, I see the direction that we're going. And so now I'm going to willingly create what it is that I want. See, for me, I believe that when we talk about manifestation, the actual practice of manifestation, yeah, you can have the vision in your mind and in your head, but like the internal, the, the shift has to start internally. There, there has to be some internal movement that then like, I'm, 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 I can hear like a machine, like, you know, like it's like a transformer. Like once that internal light gets going, then the transforming of the transformers of the, everything around you will coalesce to that internal knowingness, that internal assuredness of like, yeah, that this is who I am. And this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. Do you want to join me? Come on, let's go. So for all the manifestation work, I mean, I've, I've done the vision boards, all right? I've done the vision boards. I've done the scripting. I've done the journaling. I've done the visualizations. I've done the meditations. What I can say unequivocally is that if you don't have some type of practice that you can center yourself in, you are setting yourself up to just repeat the same patterns, because when you get presented with the new opportunities, when you get presented with the new, the new thing that is in alignment with your purpose and life starts shaking up, if you're not, if you're not rooted and grounded, is is going, it's going to feel like hell. And then you're going to fall back into the old stuff. And more importantly, do not judge yourself. I repeat this so many times. And it's so necessary to repeat because the judgment, the judgment of ourselves, as we try to figure out what it is that we're doing, we stumble, we fall, we make mistakes. That's part of the process. You're not going to just automatically get it. All of these things that I'm talking to y'all about, all of these topics, see them as these are the tools. These are the tools. And bit by bit, piece by piece, all of these concepts, all of these topics and all of the episodes and videos will begin to make sense. And you'll be like, oh, that's why, oh, that's why Kendall shared that because that connects with that. Oh, because all of this is connected. All of these topics are connected together. It's all happening at the same time. It's not linear. Healing is not a linear thing. It's all together. <laughs> it's all at the same time. This was a great episode too, y'all. This was a great episode as well. Okay. All right. I encourage you to uh, hop on over to Patreon. Like I said earlier, I did a cute little video. It's cute. It's, I'm just sharing. <laughs> but I want to... Uh, expand some of the exclusive content and um, put that up on the Patreon. There's already the May tarot card reading that I did up there. There's another welcome video. And, oh, I should also say this, you will get the episodes earlier. You'll get the podcast episodes earlier on Patreon. So I put those out before they go live. I usually have them go live on Mondays. So you'll have access to the, um, the podcast episodes before they go live. So, you know, benefits, perks, things like that. Go check it out on Patreon. All the information is in the description box 
and in the episode show notes for the pay, for the podcast. Thank you so much for watching, listening. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, rate the podcast, all of the things. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will catch y'all in the next episode. Bye.